Welcome to Church Unleashed, a Lutheran ministry that wants you to know that you are unconditionally loved by God. We know that faith can often seem like a wrestling match, life overwhelming and hope hard to find. Worship gives us a chance to pray, hear sacred stories, rest in love, and be turned outward to prepare for the week ahead. So join us every week, either on TV or online. Take a deep breath as we begin worship together. Good morning and welcome to Church Unleashed. Welcome to this time of worship. I'm Pastor Steve Bigner. Glad that you are here. You are you and this is... I'm Pastor Jeremiah from Parkside Lutheran. Excellent. Blessed to be a part of this ministry. We want to just take a moment not only to welcome you but to acknowledge this might be your very first time ever worshiping with us. Yeah. And so we want to share a little bit about how this ministry came to be. Pastor Steve, why are you on TV? Are you trying to make tons of money or something? Not at all. When you say televangelists, it is not us. We're just here because during COVID, we weren't able to worship in person and we scrambled to figure out what to do. And that was four years ago. And here we are. So uh, we're here. Two kids ago for two me. Two kids ago for you. My two kids are gone since then. So uh, two left, two appeared. We're just glad you're here. Uh, and we're glad that you're here following Jesus. And Pastor Roger is going to be here with us in a little bit, walking us through some of that about what the scripture says. But um, thankful that you're here today. Again, if, if today's a blessing for you, and we hope it is for the next half hour, tell your friends, share it with your family, uh, check it out online and tell them about it. Uh, and so we're really glad to worship today. So we start the same way every time we worship, and that's centering ourselves around God's grace and love for us. We do that by this thing called confession and hearing God's forgiveness. So join us in that. We worship today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, thought word, and deed, by, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained pastor in the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Good morning, everybody. It's my favorite part of the service. It's time for the children's message. So young, young at heart, gather around and listen up. This is a word just for you. I'm sitting here in the Sunday school room here at Zion Lutheran Church because it's that time of year when Sunday schools are started back up and maybe you've gone back to regular school too. Maybe you're a student, maybe you're a teacher, or maybe, like me, you just have to make a lot of to-do lists this time of year. When I was a student, I'd have to write down, okay, get this paper signed by my mom, or make sure you do that math work. And even if you're not in school, I am sure you make all kinds of to-do lists or shopping lists. I don't know about you, but today we're gonna hear from Pastor Roger that we are called to follow Jesus. I wonder if that ever starts to feel like another to-do list. I wanna share with you a little bit from one of the Apostle Paul's letters. He wrote all kinds of letters to people in churches. This one was written to the church in Corinth. We call it Corinthians. And in it, Paul writes, love is easygoing and kind. It never wants what it can't have. It doesn't brag. It's not rude. It's not selfish. It doesn't get angry. It always forgives. Love is happy with the truth. Love always protects, trusts, and hopes. Love doesn't give up. It never fails. He wrote all those amazing things about love. And I think following Jesus involves a lot of love, but this seems a little overwhelming to me. Be easygoing and kind. Have you met me? Don't be rude. I'll try. Not be selfish. It's tough for humans. Don't get angry. Always forgive. This is a long to-do list if we're going to follow Jesus. But here's some really good news. When Paul is talking about love, he's talking about God's love. God's love for you and for me even when we struggle to follow. And so I hope as you are in school or making your to-do list that you will remember you don't have to do anything for this love that never fails. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for your love that never fails and never ends. Amen. Last week, we dug into the questions, who am I and who is Jesus? Questions that invite us into a place of self-reflection. And I wonder, what did you come up with? Could be something different for everyone, though Peter does give us the correct textbook, Bible book answer. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. This week, We're going to wrestle with another question, and it takes us into some more difficult territory. The response to Jesus defining what he knows it means by being this Messiah, the Son of the living God. When Jesus gives his answer, it's shocking. It's not what the disciples expect, and it's not what we expect either. Friends, this is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 16th chapter. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. 
For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Friends, this is the Gospel of the Lord, and it is one of the most challenging that we ever receive in our lives of faith. This Gospel calls us to become selfless, to follow Jesus on the way of the cross, a way that does not turn away but accepts the challenges of suffering, the inevitability of death, and the hope of a resurrection promise we cannot begin to comprehend. Peter fails to comprehend what it means to be the Messiah when Jesus tells him. And I hear the rebuke, but I also hear and feel that pain that Peter has in his heart. This must never happen to you. After receiving the high praise for giving the correct textbook answer, you are the Messiah, Peter now receives probably the worst insult in all of Scripture when Jesus says, you are Satan. Could you imagine if Jesus called you Satan? What did I do? Friends, this gospel is challenging. And we of the church have struggled with it since St. Peter's first response. A theologian, Richard Ward, writing for Luther Seminary, turns this response into one sentence, which I appreciate and I'll share with you now. Too often, when Jesus says cross, the church votes crown. And I'll say it again. Too often, when Jesus says cross, the church votes crown. He letting go of the things that we think are making us happy, our crowns, in order to experience a life of blessedness and real joy, even in the face of suffering, the cross. We struggle with this. In our current civilization where we live under this strange assumption that if I just look out for me and pursue my own happiness and everyone else is free to do the same, then everyone will be happy and okay. Clearly a system thought up by very wealthy and not enslaved people. When money equals freedom, there will always be only ever so much to go around. And the people who have the most money, freedom, or crowns are typically very good at growing their abundant supply and typically very terrible at following the self-giving, selfless way of the cross. We struggle with this. We all struggle with it. The slipperiness of this slope. Life in all its fullness. How could that equal letting go of so much that we think is important, being compassion in a broken world and especially in the places where the world is at its most broken. How could embracing that kind of brokenness and suffering lead us to joy? We're supposed to struggle with it. Jesus offers another question to those disciples though, when he asks, what will they give in return for their life? What will those who have received that kind of joy, that kind of salvation, who know that they are truly alive, give for that life? Last week, I described for you where I first truly understood who Jesus was for me. Jesus is that one in the empty chair in a hospital room that one who is in the empty space all around us, offering love and grace and kindness and compassion, 
always, even if we can't see him right there. Today, this cross-following life in all of its fullness is captured for me by another person in that hospital room. And this time it's the patient, the one who has received treatment or been saved and has received their life, been given that second chance. How do you spend the rest of your life after you have received the gift of your life and you know it? That's why I pray all the time, thank you, God, for the gift of this day. You see, crowns are the furthest thing from our minds when we have been given that second chance. The first thing on our minds usually, at least what I experienced with patients was to call their kids or their parents or people who were really close and important to them and remind them that they loved them. It's the first thing we do when we get that second chance. We connect to something that's real. To remind me that my time is not unlimited, that every day is sacred. I pray, thank you God for this day, that each moment I get to choose to grow my supply of crowns or to take another step in following the cross. To build up my own selfishness or to practice some selflessness and generosity and faith. I'll say it again. We all struggle with this, the slipperiness of this slope. But Jesus says it clear. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. I wonder, it is in that my life has just been saved. Every moment is precious. How now shall I use this gift of life? I cannot wait to share this good news with the world energy that Jesus is calling us to live into. That question we ought to ask every day, how shall I use this sacred gift of life? To which Jesus' answer will always be, follow me. I'll leave you this morning with some words from St. Paul who is writing to a divided church in uncertain times about how these followers of Jesus ought to respond to all of this brokenness and suffering that we experience. He says this, Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. And if it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, Never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. St. Paul writing those words all those years ago to a world that was just as broken as ours is today. And the advice is, the command is just as simple and as difficult then as it is today. Don't fall into the trap of the brokenness. 
follow Jesus on that path of selflessness, it's hard. But at the end, that promise of life is for you. Amen. Let's join together and confess the faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, we invite you now to join us in a time of prayer. So let's take a deep breath and pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day, for all the blessings that we see, for being led to follow you and seeing how that transforms and changes our lives. So thank you for that invitation to the original disciples and to us as disciples to follow you in each of our days. Continue to lead us and guide us in the days and steps ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Jesus Christ, our healer and our redeemer. When following you feels like another to-do list. When life is feeling overwhelming and we don't know where to turn. May we be reminded that your love is a gift, that your grace is always sufficient. So Lord, fill our hearts up so that they might overflow into your world to be a loving presence with those in need, all who heard and to to just right the wrongs that we come across. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for those that heard your call to follow and followed. Those that put one foot in front of the other in your way of the cross and who then showed us that way by their life and by their love. We thank you and we bless you for all the saints who have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And when we forget how to pray, Lord, thank you for giving us this great pattern, this, this great uh, way to reconnect with you anytime, any place, for any reason. So we pray it now together. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You said in your prayers, you said like, put one foot in front of You just heard the song, didn't you? I know, I hear the song it's, in my head. But it says like, and soon you'll be walking out the door. Is this a song I'm supposed to know? Yeah, it's a yeah. It's from, the, thing? It's from the 70s. Oh yeah. boy. You guys know well, what I'm talking about. It's a Christmas special. It's Sorry. that part of the service, not where Pastor Steve sings a solo, but <laughs> where we get to miser, celebrate right? that it is. Yeah, it's yeah, the heat yeah, miser. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, mail God. time. Oh, we have mail time. Really? Mail time. Sorry. We're out of practice, if you couldn't tell. Uh, it's mail, mail time. time. <laughs> and I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you. I've received so many messages uh, over the birth of my son, and so we just give thanks for your prayers, for your kindness, and for your love. It is humbling. Uh, yeah, very cool. to be on the receiving yeah. end and uh, even though we are exhausted we are just overflowing with joy and love so I'll take as an opportunity to show one more picture <laughs> but again thank you well we are happy for you and uh, okay. praying for you and eventually we all do sleep through the night as okay. human beings so it is it, it's coming it's coming any it's any coming. week now yep
We want to also say uh, this program, this worship, this, uh, this time together would not be possible without your continued support. So uh, we put a, a QR code on the screen for you. For those who are tech savvy, they can take a picture of it. It'll take you to our website. Uh, but your gifts, your offerings to this ministry make it possible. Uh, so please continue to give uh, generously. We appreciate you. Yeah, and actually, you do, Pastor Roger, you don't take a picture of the QR code. You take a picture, just snap no, you, no, you put it there. I have more pictures of QR codes. Oh boy. You hold the phone up. Another generational thing. You hold With the phone up, the and then you press the yellow thing underneath it. So oh, that's what it is. God. Okay, no, anyways. I'm learning, I'm constantly Snail learning. mail's always good too. We figured this Please out Please bless us, Pastor Friends, Steve. Friends, quiet down. <laughs> you, as you go on your way today, may the Lord go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to be your friend, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. Go today celebrating and rejoicing in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. So may you be unleashed, unleashed to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. That's how the QR code works? Yeah, yeah, oh, it is. Man, I... I have set you to be the light for all people. I have sent you to be the light of the for all.